Okay, so I want to talk to the kids now. Okay, kids, where are the kids? Okay, there's kids over here, and I think there's kids in the back. All right, so I have a story to tell. So, first of all, who is this guy? Can you put that picture up, please? Who's that? Kids, any idea? Rudolph, right, okay. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, that's right. And I want to tell you the story about Rudolph, because we all know the Rudolph story, right? I mean, we've seen the TV special, we've heard the song. Every Christmas, this story is everywhere. But what most of us don't know is how this story was originally created. So, it was written by this man, Robert May, and that's one of his daughters sitting on his lap reading the book. Robert May, in 1939, was working for a department store in Chicago, that's a city in the States, and he worked as an ad writer, so he wrote the ads that they put in newspapers and stuff. It was for um, one of the big department stores, and every Christmas, they gave out a free book to kids. And they said, this year, why don't we write the book? And Robert, we would like you to write the book. Now, Robert, at this time, was a single dad. He had a daughter, Barbara. And Barbara's favorite animal was, in the zoo, were reindeer. And the store had said, we, whatever you do with this story, and it's got to be a Christmas story, we want it to be about an animal, because kids like that. So he said, okay, well, that's easy. I'll make it about a reindeer. Now, the thing is that Robert wasn't a Christian. Robert was Jewish. And Robert was living at a time in 1939 when Jewish people couldn't get into sports clubs. They couldn't get into golf clubs. They were denied access to universities. Often there'd be quotas on how many Jews could be allowed into a university. So Jews were living at a time in America, and the same thing was true in Canada, where they weren't always allowed to go where everybody else was allowed to go. So Robert wrote a Christmas story about a reindeer who had a funny nose that the other kids made fun of, and so they wouldn't let him play with them. And that was the story which he wrote up, wrote up as Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer in 1939. Okay, but the story's a little bit different than it shows up in the song and the TV special. What happens in the story is that Rudolph is living in a village of reindeer. He's got a mom and dad, and you know he tries to play with the other reindeer kids during the day, but they don't let him play because they make fun of his shiny nose, which shines red both day and night, even when he's asleep. So, but he doesn't live at the North Pole. So it's different than the story that we see on TV. He just lives in a reindeer village far from the North Pole. But Chris, it's all happening on Christmas Eve. And on Christmas Eve, he's hoping that he's going to be able to get more presents than the mean kids because he hasn't been mean to anybody. So he goes to bed on Christmas Eve night looking forward to Santa coming into his room to leave some presents. Meanwhile, in the North Pole, it's a foggy, foggy night. It's so foggy. So Santa gets all the reindeer that can fly, those special reindeer, and he gets them hooked up to the sled, and he's got all the toys in the sleigh, and he flies off, but he can't see where he's going because it's so foggy. So he flies as close as he can to the towns and the villages because he needs their lights to be able to tell where he's going. But the problem is, by midnight, all the grown-ups are going to bed, so they're turning off all the lights, so the villages and the towns get dark. Well, Santa's got a real problem now because he just can't tell where he's going in all this fog. But at midnight, it happens that he lands in Rudolph's reindeer village. And he's bumping around in the dark in Rudolph's house, leaving presents for the reindeer kids. And he opens the door to Rudolph's room. And holy cow, he can see again because Rudolph's asleep in his bed with this bright red nose that glows in the dark. Now, I want to show you some pages from the original story. So, if we can put it up. So, Santa has an idea. And he says to Rudolph, I want, you to, I want you to guide my sleigh tonight. 
And Rudolph can't believe it. He's just woken up, and there's Santa Claus in front of him. I mean, how good does that get? Sorry, I want to read you the original words here, because they matter. So Rudolph can't believe it. Wow, this is like a wish come true. So Rudolph writes a note to his parents saying, don't worry, I haven't disappeared. I've just gone off to be with Santa to help him deliver the presents. And what Santa says to Rudolph is he says, and you, he told Rudolph, may yet save the day. Your wonderful forehead may yet pave the way for a wonderful triumph. It actually might. Old Santa, you notice, was extra polite to Rudolph regarding his wonderful forehead. To call it a big shiny nose would be horrid. <laughs> so Rudolph agrees to lead the sleigh that night through the fog. Next slide, please. And in spite of the fog, they flew quickly and low and made such good use of the wonderful glow. From Rudolph's er, forehead, at each intersection, that not even once did they lose their direction. And so after a night of delivering presents, Rudolph returns to his reindeer village. So, yeah, there we go, thank you. The sleigh and its reindeer soon came into view, and Rudolph led them as downward they flew. Oh boy, was he proud as they came to a landing, right where his handsomer playmates were standing. These bad deer, who used to do nothing but tease him, would now have done anything only to please him. They felt even sorrier that they had been bad when Santa said, Rudolph, I have never had a deer quite so brave or so brilliant as you fighting black fog and guiding me through. By you, last night's journey was actually bossed. Without you, I'm certain we all would have gotten lost. I hope you'll continue to keep us from grief on future dark trips as commander-in-chief. That's the original story of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's a story about how all of us should be celebrated for the talents and gifts that we have, even if it's not so obvious what we're bringing there's a place for all of us, and all of us can be useful. Now, a few years after the story, so the story uh, was written up, published, and they gave it out that first Christmas in 1939, and 2.5 million copies were given out. It was a huge, huge hit. But then the war happened, and there were paper shortages, so they couldn't publish it for a few years. After the war, they started publishing it, and they started selling it, and started making a lot of money, and the department store gave the rights back to uh, Robert May so that he could make money out of this wonderful creation. And then, in 1947 or 48, his sister got married to a songwriter. And he said, I want to write a song about that story. And so he did. And that's what we're going to hear now. Come on up, popcorn.